but I was turned down because I had too much investment real estate. The loan committee didn't like that I made so much money from rent. They wanted to know why I did not have a normal job with the salary. They did not question the Armani suits, golf clubs, or art collection. Life is sometimes tough when you do not fit the standard profile. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Reading Rich Dad, Poor Dad with Menno. I have to put it up against my face just so that uh, the Zoom knows what I am reading because I've got a background picture and it doesn't pick up the book. Anyhow, in this episode, we are going to be talking about assets. And we're going to be talking about two different kinds of assets because Robert Kiyosaki is talking about mind your own business. And in this case, he's going to be talking about assets, the ones that make you money and the ones that don't. And he's going to distinguish between the two. So I'm excited. Let's get into it. And thank you for joining. I assume most of us have filled out a credit application to buy a house or a car. It's always interesting to look at the net worth section because of what accepted banking and accounting practices allow a person to count as assets. One day, when I wanted a loan, my financial position did not look too good. So I added my new golf clubs, my art collection, books, electronics, Armani suits, rich washers, shoes, and other personal effects to boost the number in the asset column. But I was turned down because I had too much investment real estate. The loan committee didn't like that I made so much money from rent. They wanted to know why I did not have a normal job with the salary. They did not question the Armani suits, golf clubs, or art collection. Life is sometimes tough when you do not fit the standard profile. This is extremely true. So very often people will um, start getting properties if they're into real estate and they get their first properties and all of a sudden they hit a ceiling. And the reason they hit their ceiling is because the bank wants to see more income. So even if there is income coming off the other properties, and even though you are showing that you are a savvy investor, unless you are like a super sophisticated investor, which Robert Kiyosaki talks about a lot, then uh, they are not interested in how you are doing things because they still see you as risky. Whereas technically you're doing the right thing, but you just look risky on paper. And so it is very funny when. Yeah, owning all of these properties, which shows that you are, you must know what you're doing, um, is actually held against you. I cringe every time I hear someone say to me that their net worth is a million dollars or a hundred thousand dollars or whatever it is. One of the main reasons net worth is not an accurate is not accurate is simply because the moment you begin selling your assets, you are taxed for any gains. So many people have put themselves in deep financial trouble when they run short of income. To raise cash, they sell their assets. But their personal assets can generally be sold for only a fraction of the value that is listed on their personal balance sheet. Or if there is a gain on the sale of the assets, they are taxed on the gain. So again, the government takes its share, thus reducing the amount available to help them out of debt. That is why I say someone's net worth is often worth, worth less than they think. And it is so true. If you lose money on the deal, the government doesn't really care about you. If you make money on, let's say, your golf clubs and you have a collector's item and you now sell it for more, they say, you made money, you owe us tax. It's interesting because let's say that we lose money on it. We could then also say, well, the government owes me money on the amount that I lost, perhaps. Reverse tax. Maybe, you should, uh, maybe we should have a chat to the government about that. What do you reckon the chances that they'll... Uh, Show any interest in that one. Anyhow, start minding your own business. Keep your daytime job, but start buying real assets, not mm. liabilities or personal effects that have no real value once you get them home. A new car loses nearly 25% of the price you pay for it the moment you drive it off the lot, and that is extremely true. It is not a true asset, even if your banker lets you list it as one. My $400 new titanium driver was worth $150 the moment I teed off. Keep expenses low, reduce liabilities, and diligently build a base of solid assets. For young people who have not yet left home, it is important for parents to teach them the difference between an asset and a liability. Get them to start building a solid asset column before they leave home. Get married, buy a house, have kids, and get stuck in a financial position that is risky, clinging to a job and buying everything on credit. I see so many young couples who get married and trap themselves into a lifestyle 
that will not let them get out of debt for most of their working years. For many people, just as the last child leaves home, the parents realize they have not adequately prepared for retirement and they begin to scramble to put some money away. Then their own parents become ill and they find themselves with new responsibilities. So what kind of assets am I suggesting that you or your children acquire? In my world, real assets fall into the following categories. Businesses that do not require my presence. I own them, but they are managed or run by other people. If I have to work there, it's not a business. It becomes my job. Stocks, bonds, income generating real estate, notes, IOUs, royalties from intellectual properties such as music, scripts, and patents. Anything else that has value produces income or appreciates and has a ready market. As a young boy, my educated dad encouraged me to find a safe job. But my rich dad encouraged me to begin acquiring assets that I loved. If you don't love it, you won't take care of it. I collect real estate simply because I love buildings and land. I love shopping for them. And I could look at them all day long. When problems arise, the problems aren't so bad, but it changes my love for real estate. For people who hate real estate, they shouldn't buy it. I also love stocks of small companies, especially startups, because I'm an entrepreneur, not a corporate person. In my early years, I worked in large organizations such as Standard Oil of California, the U.S. Marine Corps, and Xerox Corporation. I enjoyed my time with those organizations and have fond memories, but I know deep down I am not a company man. I like starting companies, not running them. So my stock buys are usually of small companies. Sometimes I even start the company and take it public. Fortunes are made in new stock issues, and I love the game. Many people are afraid of small cap companies and call them risky, and they are. But that risk is diminished if you love what the investment is, understand it, and know the game. With small companies, my investment strategy is to be on the is to be out of the stock in a year. On the other hand, my real estate strategy is to start small and keep trading up for bigger properties, and therefore delay paying taxes on the game. This is possible in America. Don't I know that they definitely don't have the same rule in Australia, but we can have a look to see whether there is any equivalent. This allows the value to increase dramatically. I generally hold real estate less than seven years. We'll leave it at that, but you can see the difference between real assets according to rich dad and real assets according to poor dad. So you want the assets that appreciate in value. So hopefully you enjoyed the rest of uh, chapter three that we've been reading. If you would like to watch the replays, if you've missed out on some of the videos, you can watch them on YouTube at the Passive Cashflow Club. Make sure you hit subscribe because we're also uploading other videos this year that you might like to know about when they are uploaded. Um, if you'd like to reach out and know anything else about the Cashflow Club, the Robert Kiyosaki Cashflow Club that I run in Sydney, as well as the online version, which takes the cash flow to a whole new level so you can implement it more easily in real life. Cash flow is great, but then you also want a little bit more realism and you want to start implementing it in real life. So if you'd like to know more about that, feel free to reach me on Instagram. You'll find me at business underscore team underscore the number six underscore official. And you can send me a personal message and I'll get my VA, my virtual assistant to send you information about when the game is happening. And you can also have a chat about different things, rich dad, poor dad. I would love, since I'm the one doing the commentary, I would love to also hear what you think. So you can leave a comment at YouTube, at the Passive Cashflow Club, or you can also reach out on Instagram, business underscore team, underscore the number six, underscore official. I'm looking forward to hearing from you. Thank you so much for joining. I really appreciate it. And have a wonderful day today. Go out and reach your goals.